So if you bowl professionally, then you're very skilled at laying the ball down with a lot of rotation on it, and it will spin laterally with respect to the wood, the polished wood of the lane, and eventually, right before crashing into the, the you hope, the head pin, uh, roll without slipping. But we are not. We are, in fact, severely untalented bowlers. And so we are just going to throw the ball with no spin whatsoever at, in the right direction. And it will slide for a while along the lane and eventually come to roll without slipping. And we would like to figure out how fast it is moving when that takes place. After that, in the approximation that we're making, when it rolls without slipping, is its kinetic energy a constant of the motion? Yeah, we're making that assumption, that approximation. Okay. Also, even though you see holes in the ball, we're going to approximate that it's a uniform density sphere. Close enough. Okay. So, <clears throat> the first approach Isolation diagram, I have the bowling ball, I have the alley, and I need to inventory the forces. So there is the mass of the ball times gravity going down. There would be a normal force at the point of contact going up. Anything else? Which way? I'm assuming the ball gets thrown that way. So friction will be opposing. Why? Because the bottom surface of the ball is trying to drag itself that way with respect to the lane. So the lane is going to apply an oppositely directed force. So force of friction back to the left. Yeah, button. Can you explain the direction? Yeah. Yeah. So the ball is going to be thrown with an initial velocity v not that way. Oh, okay. We're sliding. We're sliding. And it's sliding because I'm a crappy bowler and I haven't put spin on it. Okay, so now I'm leaving it to the lane to spin up the ball. Okay, and I'm also going to define a direction that's positive for a rotation angle theta, which is going to start at zero and then go positive. And we might as well say, okay, from the point where the ball contacts the lane, we have uh, a distance x heading off to the right. Okay, so the first thing is I can apply Newton's second law in the form, the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Well, the normal force and gravity are just doing their usual wiping each other out thing. The only unbalanced force is the force of friction, which is off to the left. So by the time I project in the x direction, I have minus the force of friction is equal to m times the acceleration, x double dot. And this is a constant. In fact, we could express the force of friction, since it's sliding, as what? <coughs> Minus a kinetic friction coefficient times whatever is the normal force. But in this case, by inspection, that normal force is just mg. or that the acceleration is equal to m's go out minus mu sub k times g. You, units are good. <laughs> yeah, but the units are good. <laughs> okay, fine. Have it your way. <laughs> 
minus mg. I guess I was doing C++ and decrementing it. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's a constant. So we can integrate to get the velocity. So d of t would be minus mu sub k g t plus whatever initial velocity it had, which was called v naught. And what is the range over which this expression is valid? Forever and a day? Negative time? Imaginary time? Yeah, Faith is not happy with imaginary time. We'll leave that for another day. So I started at, at time zero and it made that first contact and the assumptions of the forces start then, so no negative time. And as uh, he said, it should be valid until the ball rolls without slipping. Once that happens, then there's no more frictional force that's trying to slow it down. Okay, so this is going to be valid until it rolls without slipping. <laughs> okay, so I used a reference point here. I'm now going to calculate torques on the system about the center of mass and say that the sum of the torques must be equal to, must cause. So the sum of the torques is going to cause the time rate of change of angular momentum, except that we're going to worry about angular momentum only about the center of mass. And so we can simplify that. About the center of mass, no torque from either of these two forces. It's only F. And so what is the vector torque caused by friction? So I need a magnitude and a direction. So force of friction. How far is it from the center of mass? Well, I, did I say anything about it? Probably just R, about R for the radius of the ball. Which way? Let's see. R cross F in, do you agree, into the board? OK, so that must be equal to I prime times omega. And the direction has to agree, so that's going to be into the board. Is that going to be the right direction to spin it up so that we can actually get agreement between the rotation rate and the center of mass velocity? I think so. So that's good. OK, so Uh, did I drop something? I sure did. Woody Howard. Time rate of change of the angular momentum, right? Was that? I was very confused. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know. It's towards the end of the semester. So, <clears throat> okay, so I guess my dynamical variable here is omega dot, which is equal to, let's see, the force of friction times r divided by i prime, except we saw that the force of friction was mu sub k m g r over, I'll leave it for i prime for the moment, and then we'll sub in uh, just a little bit later. And that's a constant. So once again, we can just integrate directly and get omega is equal to whatever it was at time zero plus 
mu sub k m g r over i prime times t. What's omega null? Zero because I'm a crappy bowler. And so this it starts with no rotation. So we now have an expression for omega of t. It's just alpha t where alpha is this crap. Uh, uh, sorry, this um, fine expression. <laughs> Okay. Now, how do I figure out when it rolls without slipping? Mm hmm? Say again? Omega is equal to V. Omega R is equal to V. Okay, so it will, she says it will roll without slipping. final times r is equal to v of t final. Okay? And then thereafter. So I don't want to write this without a subscript because this is at a particular moment when that synchronization happens and we can find that moment just by subbing in now. So alpha r t final is equal to v naught minus mu sub k g t final. So isolating, let's see, v naught is equal to, uh, I probably shouldn't reverse the, the order here. So let's see, alpha r plus mu sub k g times t final is v naught. 